Chapter number four. Chapter number four. 
13, chapter number 4, beginning with verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. All right, notice, as you know, with the beloved Apostle Paul, and um, the reason why we're starting out with this verse is um, those first uh, clause there. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. And one thing God does not want us to be ignorant of, he wants us to be knowledgeable uh, of even with Paul's subject here, is talking about uh, death and life. And um, he doesn't want us to be ignorant and also not to sorrow, even <coughs> as others sorrow that have no hope. Amen. That have no hope. And um, we as the children of God, as the saints of God, we have a hope in Christ. And uh, so death in and of itself is, 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 is something that, I'll just be honest, is something uh, that should be expected. Uh, people die every day. Uh, and, and death is something that should not really take us by, and by the long and safest way, by surprise. I know when people pass, and I'm not trying to be cold hearted or anything like that, when people pass, it shock us. You know, oh my God, how did that happen? Uh, but in reality, in reality, beyond all that, People die. People go on. And uh, he says, I would not have you be ignorant, even as others which have no hope. You know, are we? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, uh -huh. even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Yeah. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So, so are we? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, yeah. with the voice of the archangel, mm -hmm. and with the trump of God, uh -huh. and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Read. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So in the, those passages of Scripture there, there's a, a continuous statement about death, and there's a continuous statement about life. And that's what <coughs> we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about, in our Bible study today, death and life. All right? So, so... Pardon? Shouldn't we feel sorry for the people that aren't saved and they might not get to heaven, or should we pray, believe, and they're going to be saved and then have hope that way? Oh, yes, we should be uh, uh, sorry, mourn for them. Yes, uh, those that who are not saved and uh, want to uh, see them get saved. That should be a motivator for us uh, to be a witness to them because we. The scripture says, knowing the terror of God, uh, we have an understanding that those who are, are not saved are really going to spend eternity uh, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, yes, we should feel sorry, and that sorrow should turn into compassion. Uh, and compassion is, is knowing that people have, uh, people are experiencing a problem and we should do something to help them. That's one of the reasons why we, uh, the Lord has called us to be witnesses. Okay. Beautiful question. Beautiful question. Thank you. Somebody should have said beautiful question. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to turn with me uh, to, uh, 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 I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew. Uh, chapter 25. Yes. Matthew chapter 25. And uh, 
And basically, um, the answer to her question is, is in this chapter, Jesus is discussing, uh, beginning in verse 31, but um, I'm trying to stick to our theme on tonight, talking about death to life, death to life. And I want to jump down to uh, verse 46. Verse 46, last verse in that particular chapter. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, uh -huh. but the righteous life into eternal life. The righteous into, into eternal life. Thank you. Uh, so what Jesus in this chapter is saying to us, is that uh, those that are not connected to him will experience eternal separation. And those that are connected to him will experience eternal life. Amen? Eternal life. And that's what I'm going to explain today. I'm going to talk about that on today. Um, because it's important for us to know what death is and to know what the Bible says about life. What is death and what is life. Because generally speaking, people have a, a misconception of truly what death is. And uh, uh, to help me to explain that, uh, I want to go to uh, we're going to jump around in the scriptures, but I'm trying to, to, to establish uh, some main points here, and uh, hopefully we'll bring it all together with the hope and help of Christ. Uh, uh, we'll just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Amen. We'll spend the majority of our time tonight in this particular chapter. All right. All right, we'll jump down, we'll jump, we'll jump around uh, uh, for a moment. All right, uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, and our subject, what's our subject today? Death to life. Amen. All right. Yeah. Uh, 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 first Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number one, what does it say? Moreover, brethren, uh -huh. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, yeah. Which also you have received, and wherein you stand. All right, Paul is, is, is getting ready to talk about uh, primarily the resurrection of Christ and uh, the resurrection of the dead. All right, read. By which also ye are saved. Yes. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, mm -hmm. unless ye have believed in vain. Now, we don't want to uh, believe the scriptures in vain. What, what I found out about faith, God gives us uh, 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 faith. Amen. Faith to do what? Faith to believe. And then that faith should actually take you from belief into knowing. Amen. Now, I want you to, to hear me when I say that. Faith should actually take you from Believing into knowing. And that knowing is uh, being confident uh, in what God has said. Faith should take you to believing what God has said and then you try him out. Uh, and then when you try God out and find him to be true, then you know. Uh, but it starts with faith. Faith to believe it to know. Uh, and God in the end, uh, 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 when I say in the end, but in, in sometime in your walk with him, you should be at a point where you know. Uh, you know and are confident in the scriptures of what God has said. Uh, and, and as far as us receiving eternal life and having eternal life, we should come to a point by faith from believing to know uh, that I got eternal life abiding on the inside. And when you know that you have eternal life abiding on the inside, you walk differently. You talk differently. Uh, you act 
differently. Uh, and you guard the hope that is within your uh, 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 mind, your spirit, and your body. Uh, the scripture always, that scripture comes more alive to me uh, day after day when it says, uh, without a vision, the people perish. And that vision is uh, the word of God. Without the word of God abiding on the inside, the people perish. And that word perish there, it means they live without restraint. Uh, and God gives us his word so that it can govern our lives. And that word, faith, cometh by faith. And that by the word. the word of God. And that word, and mixed with faith, should bring you to a knowledge of knowing uh, of what God has said is true. I am God, and, and we should doubt it. We know it's true. And thereby, it governs our life. It causes us to live. And it builds us up and, and in such a way where we're so confident of what God has said, we don't doubt. Uh, we don't doubt. Uh, we're not no longer ignorant, as the scripture says. I don't want you to be ignorant of it. Uh, uh, the ignorant person just means that they don't know. We're all ignorant at one time. Uh, ignorant is really a derogatory term. It just means you don't know. Uh, but then shall you, no. if you follow, follow you move from faith to faith and to know. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, 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 read what verse you left off there. Three. All right, here we go. For I delivered unto you, first of all, uh -huh. that which I also received. Yeah. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture. Now, Paul is telling you something that he knows, because he has been instructed by Christ. Amen? And that, and that Jesus, uh, 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 read that verse again. For I delivered unto you, first of all, uh -huh. that yeah. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. All right, now Christ died. Amen. He experienced death. Now, why did Christ experience death? Why did Christ experience death? I'm asking the question. For our sins. For our sins, that's, that's true. But, but, but why? What's the what's what's the what's the genesis of it? To be the sacrifice. All right, you know, the sacrifice. That's true. So, so he can overcome death. So that he can taste death for every man. All right, maybe I'm not that. that what y'all saying is totally true and, and, and totally right. But maybe I'm not asking you the question uh, more. I gotta be more clear. Listen, what's the genesis of it? <laughs> well, God can't stand sin, and we sin so we couldn't redeem ourselves. Oh, I'm sorry. Say that again, sister. God couldn't stand sin, and we all sin, so He couldn't redeem us. We couldn't redeem ourselves, so there had to be the perfect Lamb of God die for our sins. All right, that's true. Okay. Uh, when, when He was on the cross and He said, "Why hath Thou forsaken Me?" Yeah. God left. Yeah. God left them, and, but he gave them his word that yeah. said, this power that you have, you have power to lay down your life, and you have power to take it again. Yeah. So he died to execute the faith that he had in God. All right. I know. Yeah, I totally agree with that. But why did he die? What's the genesis of it? So the blood so 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 the sacrifice the sacrifice. <laughs> I'm not going to say what I'm going to say. <laughs> Was it for, for the reason to comfort us in, in, in death, to let us know? Absolutely. Yes, yes. But that's not it. But, but that's, not, that's, not what, that's not the answer. You, what you guys are saying is totally 100% true. But I was looking for a specific answer. Uh, and, and my specific answer was when I asked, is because of what Adam and Eve did. Oh, right. That's why I said, what's the genesis of it? Genesis. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 Even when they were born, they had it in mind that 
Christ was born. What's that? Say it again. Even before Adam and Eve was created, God already had in his mind that he was going to save Christ. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, Adam and Eve, Eve uh, 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 was, was deceived by the enemy. And, and God had given them a command not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, and, and before then, they were perfect. They had eternal life abiding within them. Didn't they? Uh, and, 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 and God said, the day that you eat it, ye shall what? Die. die. That word die. Death. You should experience. You're going to experience death. So that tells you that they had life uh, before they transgressed the word of God. Yes. And then when they ate of the tree and, and she gave it to her husband to eat, death entered in. And God told them that before that, that, that dust thou art, uh, and dust thou shalt what? Return when, when, when you experience the process of death. Alright? Now, there's two types of death. There's, there's, there's physical death, and there's spiritual death. Uh, they experience physical, uh, spiritual death immediately. Uh, and they did not experience the, the physical death to years down the road. Right? And within that death, they, 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 they experienced God and, as an atonement. Uh, with their, an animal who was innocent was killed uh, to help to cover or to atone for their sins. Am I right? All right, now. Let's, let's talk about let's talk about it again. In, in that in that physical death, uh, they they were turning and back to dust. In the spiritual death, they were uh, 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 being separated from God. Right. So so when we talk about death, then death really is a separation from life. If you look at the general sense of death, it means a separation from life. And life is a gathering together, uh, a gathering uh, together of life. Now, I'm going to give you a perfect example of that. When, when, when a baby is conceived in the womb, when a baby is conceived in the womb, uh, then there's, there's some chemical things that happen. Am I right? And, and through that process of them, those chemical things that happen, you get the little zap up mixing with the with the with the egg, huh? and, and, and they're all got a bunch of zagos that are competing, right? To get to that egg. Huh? But, but 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 generally speaking, only one big surprise, but sometimes, you know, one wins and then it starts to separate and then you get through twins and triplets and all that stuff, right? But but my point about there's a joining together of the spirit, the soul, and the body. Uh, the spirit, uh, there's a spirit in it. Uh, and there's a, there's a soul that's generated in it. Uh, and, and there's a development of a body. Am I right? That's what brings forth life. There's a gathering together. Now, when people die, uh, when they die, what happens? Their, their, their spirit, their soul, and their body, it separates. Right? Now, when, when that happens, do I cease to exist? No. 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 Good, good, good answer. Well, we got some scholars in here. We do not cease to exist. Why not? Yeah, that's given the count. Well, why don't I cease to exist? What happens when I die? Right, your spirit goes back to God. Your soul goes where it goes. Yep, and, and we can say through the scriptures, it goes back to God too. Uh, to, to, to either you're going to go from a, a, a place of, of reward or you're going to go uh, to a place that is not 
so good. <laughs> uh, and what happens to your body? It goes back to the ground. And that's, and that's what death is. Death is simply a separation. Man, it's a separation. Life is a gathering together. Especially uh, when, you, when you receive spiritual life. Right? You got your body, your spirit, and your soul. And when you receive spiritual life, what does God do? What does he give you? The Holy Ghost. And therefore, he, he reconnects himself to you, giving you spiritual life. It's a joy. It's a joy. And those that become spiritually dead, what does he do? He takes his spirit away. The Holy Ghost. Huh? Takes the Holy Ghost away. Now, I'm not going to get in trouble with that. Because some people think, once they always say that they will never take his spirit from me. But that's not true. Huh? That's not true because a uh, 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 individual that is not walking with God, that was once saved, uh, they, they, they are not going to be saved with the Holy Ghost in the end. Always strive with man. Alright? So, death then is the separation. Huh? It's separated from God, from the body, soul, and the spirit. We all, if we keep living, we all going to experience that. But the key to it is that we uh, still exist. Uh, because you got your soul, that's who you are. Uh, your soul has to spend eternity somewhere. Right? Now, uh, uh, when the scripture says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever what? Believeth in him should not what? Perish, uh, but shall receive what? <coughs> Eternal life. Now, that word perish there, it, it means, it means, it means death, but it means to be eternally separated from God. There's a big difference. People experience death, but they not, they don't perish because they're not eternally separated from God. Those that die without Christ are eternally separated from God. That's what perish means. Amen? Y'all with me? All right. So we lay a good foundation. We're going to get deep up in here. <laughs> All right. Any questions on that? What we just explained? All right. All right. Amen. All right. What was she just said? You read verse 3? I do that here. For I delivered unto you first of all uh -huh. that which I also received. Yeah. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. All right, Christ did what? He died. Right? And he died specifically for what? Our sins. Uh, the sins that Adam and Eve uh, committed, uh, that, that nature was passed on to us and and when we had opportunity, we sin. Right? And that brought forth, uh, 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 well, the original sin brought forth death. But, but when we sin, it just made us guilty. Amen? All right. All right. Now, drop down here to verse number 12. Now, if Christ did preach that road that he rose from the dead, uh huh. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? All right, now, Christ, he died. Right? He died. We're going to die. Right? And the scripture says that he rose again from the dead. So, so in his death, he died. And then he goes again. We have to understand something about death. That death is, is not the, the final conclusion of God's plan. That's why Paul said, 
judgment, and this will be due if God permit. <clears throat> for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened. There it is. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. Yes. And have made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And have tasted of the good word of God. Mm -hmm. And the powers of the world to come. Yes. They shall fall away to renew them again at the repentance. Seeing they crucified for themselves the Son of God afresh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
It is over. And that's it. That person's life. You follow me? When you get badly, how many Christ Jesus, you should say, my life over there in sin is done. It is over. It is bad. I'm going to live a new life. A new and living life. Amen? Amen. Death, death, 
to that than I am to this. <laughs> huh? It gets you to thinking. And then, if, if you think about it properly, it'll sober you up. It'll make you turn to Christ. It'll make you get involved with God's plan. You realize how frail you are. Huh? Am I right? What other major purposes does that have? All right, well, we'll move on. <laughs> It'll make you search your life. Search your life? Yes, it does. It makes you think about the way you live, the, the way you respond to different things, you know, your action. Yes. You know, uh, yeah, it, in other words, death would cause you to think and to think. Absolutely. And then it'll cause you to go get your house in order. Yes. Get your will together. Yes. Huh? Turn your heart to God. Get your life together. Maybe you go apologize to Paul. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. Yeah. Yes. Huh? It makes you aware. Okay. Of what you need to be doing. Yes. The book of Psalms it says, Lord, teach us how to number our days. It, it shows us that we're not going to be here forever. Right! And, and death wakes us up. Anytime you ride by the cemetery, there's a sense of silence. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> you know one day, if you don't be raptured, you're going to be in that cemetery. Absolutely. And I like it when the preacher say, uh, especially the Baptist brother, he said, the city of the dead. You know, I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. It's like what he said. And, and let me just piggyback on what he said. But that's what he said, Lord, help me to number my days. It's really saying, Lord, help me to redeem the time. That's it. That's it. Let me, let me spend the, the rest of my time in service to you. All right. All right. Living according to how. You have the time. Can't be a butterfly all the time. Huh? Sometimes you gotta be there. It shows you how frail you are. Yeah! Hand fell away. That was what you said. Death is only a hand fell away. God keeps back dead. Huh? Have a spiritual mind, or when you have the Holy Ghost, and you you begin to realize that time is shorter for me now than it was back then. Yes. That, that draws you closer. You Close. that's when you start re trying to redeem the time. Yes. You really get serious then. You know. Serious. Yeah. You, you know, start trying to redeem the time. Yes. People play harder and fly more. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. So so death has a purpose. That's the, that's the reason why it's still around, right? And it's only as valuable as you learn from the lesson. Lessons are only as valuable as what you gain from it. You can practice it. Yeah. And make a change. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, and God is all about change. Am I right? Oh, Lord, teach me to know about it. Huh? Lord, I know I'm waiting. It's coming. If you don't come, I know there's an appointment. And then when I, have, when I make that appointment, uh, I can't change it. Then there's going to be a judgment. Huh? Right? Yeah. And, and I'm going to be rewarded. 
You're not going to say to your I'm saying this way. I'm not going to be punished for that which I repented for. My first 27 years of life don't count. Huh? This last 32 years of life, it counts. That's what I'm going to be judged for. Now, why did I say it like that? That first 27 years. Because your life That's didn't it. really start until you got the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's why I said it. Huh? And you know what excited me? When the, when the brothers and sisters get up and testify when they have these spiritual birthdays, and they say, I got more years in with Christ than I, than I did in the world. That motivated me. I wanted more years. I can say that now. <laughs> I didn't never go a milestone in my life. Amen. We got to have goals. Now I'm about to teach you something else. We got to have goals. Uh, that keeps you motivated. Am I right? You ain't got no goals. You ain't got, you didn't, you didn't just learn to have passion. Goals and determination, that helps you. Yes. Amen? When should you cease from goals? Never. Never. Should always have. Amen? The reason why I say that is, is because God has you designed to always to learn. Huh? Go ahead. I was going to say, you know, if you really look at it, you don't have the Holy Ghost, which is life. Yes! The Holy Ghost represents life. Yes! And Spirit. if you don't have it, then it's almost like dead man walking. Absolutely! <laughs> because you have no life in you. Right! I mean, no spirit. You're, you're breathing. Yes! You know, and, and, and you're doing all of those natural things, but you only begin to live when you receive Christ. Right! I know. Spiritual to live, to live spiritually. Amen. That's the goal. Then did, did he say, "Fear him that's able to destroy the body and the soul." Cast into hell. Don't fear him that's able to destroy the body, uh, because this body is going to be destroyed anyway. Huh? No matter, no matter how long. Eventually, this body is going to get out. It's designed to get out. The sentence of death physically is in us. Amen? We should yeah. always be pursuing more of Jesus because there's so much more. Yeah. I mean, no matter how long you've been saved or no matter how saved you think you are, <laughs> there's always more that you can have and there's almost more that you can get, but you have to go after it, you know. So that should be a, a goal, you know, our main goal is Absolutely. getting more of Christ. Absolutely. Uh, D.B. Fields, that that's what you said uh, from the book of John. He that hath this hope in him, this should be our goal, purify himself, even as he is pure. Amen. That should be your goal. Come on now, be like him. Yes. Amen. 
Yeah. And, 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 and you got to do more than that. You know, sometimes some people that you know they they they, they work with the boss around, but when the boss ain't around, they don't do nothing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I serve. <laughs> All right, history, history. Then, Please. then chapter forty-one. Uh -huh. Then shall he say unto them uh -huh. on the left hand, Depart from me. I know what you said. Depart from me. You curse. You curse. The devil lies in fire. Uh huh. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Read. For well, I was not hungry. I was hungry. And he gave me no meat. And he didn't feed. I was thirsty. I was thirsty. And he gave me no drink. He didn't serve. I was a stranger. Uh -huh. and he took me not in. He didn't give me no comfort. Don't show me no hospitality. Naked. Uh huh. And he clothed me not. I didn't have compassion upon me. He saw my nakedness. And he didn't help me. Uh -huh. And in prison. Yeah. And he visited me not. He didn't come see him not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, mm -hmm. Lord, uh -huh. when saw we thee in hunger, a th mm -hmm. or a thirst, uh -huh. or a stranger, uh -huh. or naked, yeah. or sick, yeah. or in prison, yeah. and did not minister unto thee? Minister, serve. Read. Then shall he answer them, saying, mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, yeah. and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, mm -hmm. ye did it not to me. See? You didn't serve. Service is key in the kingdom. Doing and helping others is necessary. Huh? More than necessary. It's an act of salvation. We have to do it. Amen? Have to be witnesses. Have to help people. Have to serve people. Regardless of how they treat you. Well, that's what Jesus did. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. He served. Absolutely. And they killed him. Put him in hell. Amen. The people that you, you take a chance on, and we like to say this way, to help. They didn't turn any back on you. Now I appreciate you. The one who helped the most. Uh, right, right, right. And, 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 is that okay? No. Yes, it's okay! <laughs> Should first start at the church. Yeah. Because when we start at the church, 
uh, like you said earlier, there are different spirits in the church and you have to deal with the different spirits. Yeah. That prepares you to deal with the outside world. Yeah. You know, I mean, like you mentioned about your coat. Yeah. You know, people are, you can give people stuff and they don't, they ask for it, but they don't really appreciate it. Right. Sometimes people ask you for stuff out of jealousy. They just want you to give your stuff away. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, 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 but you got to learn when you give it in love, like you said, you know, you don't think nothing about that stuff no. because you gave it in secret. Yeah. And that's between you and God and God going to reward you openly. Yeah. But you start serving in the church, God prepares you to yeah. deal with the outside world because there's a lot of spirits here. Spirits. Yeah. Crazy, man. Yes. That's a movie. Uh, Go ahead. Scripture is Luke 6, 6 to 35. It says, but love ye your enemies. And before that, it's talking about, um, you know, both of them. And this is the second time I'm doing it. But love ye your enemies and do good uh, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your re reward shall be great. He shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. That's it. Ain't that real? That's how we should do it. Give, hoping, nothing in return. That's it. I'm not looking for return. I'm looking for God. That's it. Amen. Yes. Amen. The yes. scripture tells us it's more blessed to, to give than to receive. That's it. Amen. And the reason why that is, is because if you're giving, that means you're giving out of your abundance. Yes. God has blessed you. Come on now. Okay. Come on. Come on. Hey! Uh, See, the scriptures is good. Yes. It helps us. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It helps. When you know these things, it helps you to overcome yes. negative thoughts, negative feelings, negative emotions. Amen. Truly, then, the joy of the Lord becomes your strength. Amen. Uh, when you give out abundance, Pastor, God will always give you more. Like the song says, you give, and, and you get bigger and greater things. Yeah. You know, God will continue. That's why the, the song says, if you give to the Lord, he'll give you more to give. Because when you give, God is steady giving you. Yeah. You're not losing, you're gaining. Gain. Always mm -hmm. gain. Uh, uh, Pastor Joyce Rose was talking about that. Yes. She said, she said, uh, no, uh, no matter what people how they mistreat your money or do what you need yeah. to you, God's always gonna give you. Yeah, money. that's it. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, as far as in the church, uh -huh. uh, a lot of times people take your kindness as a weakness. Uh -huh. And they'll try to manipulate in the church. In the church. Right in the church. Right? You ain't gotta go outside. That's it. It's right in the church. Right? That's it. Because you got goats yes. in the church. Yes. That's, That's a learning. Yes. 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 People come in the church with street sticks. Yes. And they'll use it on you if you let them. Yeah. Yes. The scripture says, and this is true. We become a sheep for the slaughter. And 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 I'm getting a little deep here. I'm telling I'm telling you to be a fool or nothing like that. Because the Bible tells you to be wise. Right? But but when you show acts of kindness, uh, it, it, it leaves you vulnerable from manipulation. God knows it. That's why he said, I am not exceeding great reward. If you, if anybody follows the word of God, I'll give you another principle. If I'm following what God's word says, and that individual uses and uh, what I give them in a negative way, or they, they, they have manipulated me out of it, do I lose my reward? No. 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 Huh? And 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 therefore I should 
get upset, I shouldn't get angry, I shouldn't let that move me from my steadfastness. Uh, I should continue to show love. We're talking maturity here. Come on now. Uh, uh, we're talking about walking with God. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. 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 I'm just going to say the Bible says when you give unto the poor, you live it to God. Right. So, I mean, whatever you give, right. it's going to be. It's going to be given back to you. Come on. Absolutely. If your heart is right, now don't uh, give something and then tell everybody what they didn't give. You didn't right. give. Go do that. You lose your reward. You know, I, I give uh, uh, Dick and Daniel something, and then I go and tell all the other saints, yeah, I, I gave it to Brother this, and I gave him. No. That's your reward. Right. And, and, you know, we should be too focused in on. Uh, uh, what are the things I should be doing? And then let me do it. You follow? What, what, what can I be doing? What is necessary for Steve? And then let me do it. Did it feel? Well, uh, in the church. But let me find the hands to do it all here. In, in, in the church, it's supposed to have this person called a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And he's supposed to, or she, they're supposed to uh, watch over his sheep. Mm -hmm. And if you see wolves mm -hmm. among the sheep, mm -hmm. you're supposed to protect them. I mean, mm -hmm. because some people just come to church, they ain't got the victory over the people that borrow money and don't pay it back. They ain't come to that level yet. Mm -hmm. They may wait for that person outside, mm -hmm. and it might be like some problems. <laughs> I just say everybody's on a different level. Everybody ain't on that spiritual turn of the sheep yet. You know, so everybody's on different levels spiritually. So uh think about the guard, you know, guard you know, you care. Yeah, God said, I told you to be a fool. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but what we're talking about, we're talking about service. Uh, Serving one another. Uh, let's talk this out on what we're talking about. We're talking about helping one another. And, and, and when you help others, it's a sacrifice. You're putting yourself out there. So, 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 so what I'm saying is, let's not build barriers as to why I'm not helping. As to why I'm not serving. Because that barrier I feel is really a problem. Where I'm going to be buried in. You follow me? Because he said, give. He said, serve. Am I right? There is a difference. There is a difference in my very nature. There is a difference. 
I should not be like the world. People, anytime you're dealing with people, there's, there's you know, a, a, a chance you could be hurt. Somebody lying on you, somebody. That's, that's how it is in, in, in the world anyway. So it's like, how much more should we? How much more should, How much more did Christ go through? So I mean, we have to keep that in the forefront of our minds. You, you got to renew it every day. Mortify this flesh daily. So, you know, don't, don't allow those things to grab hold and take hold on your uh, ability and your willingness to serve and to, to be exposed. Absolutely. And, and we can hurt our family members with your own children. Yeah. But you don't have them all. You still have them. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You still here. Yeah. You still support. You know? And like I said before, that's growth, Bishop. Absolutely. Because I have been hurt. Yeah. I've been tossed this about. Is, okay, hold on a second. Smoking in the chair, I'm about to tell you the chair. I thank God for about to tell you tonight.